Good evening, everyone. My name is Bryce Damon. At my high school, I'm known as one of the funny guys for some strange reason. At least around my friends, that is. I can't tell you how much I love my friends. Or, wait, I can, actually. That's, that's why I'm up here. You see, my talk won't exactly be hilarious, and that's a bit of a problem. I've relied on my sense of humor for pretty much every situation, and now here I am about to present this emotional speech. So instead of humor, I'm relying on my passion and ability as a speaker to make this speech one to remember. And a majority of that passion lies within what I'm about to talk about. Friends have helped me through my most difficult times and are so, so vitally important to enjoying life and overcoming its struggles. Now, to immediately change the mood, let's just get this out of the way now since it's important to the talk. I had almost no friends for about a year, and that is not a joke. Looking back now as this totally popular and perhaps narcissistic guy, it seems impossible, but there I was, all by myself. Most of that was due to this little thing called COVID-19. Not sure if anyone here has heard of that. So for a bit of background, yes, it's unfortunate, but you will have to get to know me while listening to my talk. I used to go to a very small private school. We were basically one singular class within a school of only around 200 students, encompassing about a decade of our lives. Being together for that long, we were bound to make some connection, right? Yes, yes, the answer is yes. So those private school fools were my first real friends. Then, halfway through our final, most meaningful year there, eighth grade, we hear about this supposed life-threatening disease. Our principal comes into the room with a knock, 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 and what's this? We get time off of school? What a dream come true! Not. You see, first it was two weeks off, then it was three, then a month, then three months, then six, then a year. And by then, eighth grade was already long gone, and I was just meant to move on from everything after ten whole years there? You see, not many people kept in touch. I'm not accusing any of my old friends of anything, but I seem to have valued my time and our relationships there a lot more than they did. I could never forget those hilarious experiences. How was it that they could move on so quickly, and I couldn't? I feel like I had always esteemed friendships so highly, and I only started realizing it after they were long gone. That whole quarantine thing just got worse and worse, as it did for most people. I lost so much, and these old, familiar, unwanted demons crept into my life, as they had before. They're the kind of demons that cause you to doubt yourself. They tell you that you aren't good enough, or that you deserve the absolute worst. Yeah, they aren't very nice. Problem is, who did I have to listen to if I had nobody else? It's just not good to think about that that's probably relatable to many of you here today. Now, I'll be honest, freshman year at high school was nothing special at all. We were still online, what do you expect? There were some in-person days towards the end of the year, but not nearly enough to build strong enough connections with anyone. I'll admit, I tried, but they all fell apart by summer. Do I really seem like the charismatic type? Well, obviously now, yes, but not back then. I was still just recovering from quarantine. So summer came and went, and all the while I was, let's see, fearful, anxious, apprehensive. I remember the date well. On August 25th, 2021, the first day of my sophomore year, this bubble that I had been forced into over the past year would suddenly pop. It's this bubble of dissatisfaction, but comfort. I wouldn't have to worry about getting rejected or embarrassed or hurt as long as I stayed in my own head, my own bubble. Now, there's one word for living life like that. Unfulfilled. That is not what I wanted out of my high school experience. That first year, yeah, yeah, it was robbed from me. But now was my chance to take life back into my own hands, and I was not about to let it pass me by. No way. Not this time. So, 
there I was, wearing a hoodie and those dumb, dumb basketball shorts because I had P.E. first period. The beginning of sophomore year, all on my own. And I will probably never forget that first period P.E. class. It didn't really help that I had absolutely no idea where to go. Yeah, thanks, student view. The room being listed as field isn't all that specific. I would find it eventually, the place where I and other teenagers would just be awkwardly standing around. In the beginning of that class, we weren't able to do much except just walk the field and talk to each other. Some people just sat around the whole time, keeping to themselves. There's nothing wrong with being independent or enjoying being alone or just wanting to worry about yourself. That has just never been me. Being dependent is much, much better. To this day, I still live by the statement, P.E. homies for life. I still try to say hi to everyone I went to P.E. with on a daily basis. The impact that had of slowly getting to know them, them getting to know me, and us all becoming friends was something really, really special. What a joy that class became. I actually had something to look forward to in the morning, coming to school. Something I didn't think would ever be possible again after all that had happened in the previous year. I felt recovered because of P.E. Who would have thought? I wasn't back at my 100% complete self, and I knew I wouldn't be for a while. And that was okay. I didn't expect to be. After all, I was still spending lunch practically all alone. That's like the worst thing imaginable in high school. For me, at least. No offense to anyone who does. I just, I thrive on connection with people, though. And it really hurts when I lose that. No connection is basically no me. Regardless, I had to find my place. I couldn't sit with the cool kids. No, no, I wasn't allowed there. I had to work my way up. So I didn't sit with the cool kids. I sat with the coolest kids. In my mind, at least. Who cares if they're nerds? I saw a guy from my PE class I liked cracking a few jokes with. He was with all his friends, and I was with me, myself, and I. A couple of them already knew who Bryce was by then. Word had gotten around, as it usually does. And they all looked up at me as I approached their table. I just, I pushed all this anxiety to the side and managed to say, Hey, can I sit with you guys? And one guy I didn't even know yet said, Sure. And that's just how I began sitting with my friends. To me, that meant everything. I had found people. I was afraid. I was so, so, so afraid. But I took that leap, and it made all the difference. So it seemed like life and the rest of high school was going to be all highs and no lows from there. I met more people from other classes. The highlights are engineering, math, and, of course, English. (laughs) I had teachers that would just allow me to jump around and dance and be silly, Words cannot express how much I loved my classes and respected those teachers. It still amazes me how great things are here in high school. I actually began enjoying the experience. Then something happened at home. Something that hadn't happened in a while. I won't go into detail since it's very personal, but just understand that it was really, really difficult. What are we meant to do as powerless kids and awful situations, completely out of our control. Unjustly, there is not much we can do. Would I call my friendships an escape from those problems at home? Absolutely, I would. And no, that is not a bad thing at all. Just being in the presence of people you love is such a healthy way to cope with pain. I wholeheartedly recommend it as the best way more than an opinion, something I truly believe as a fact. It wasn't just the people around me, but even I questioning how I was able to come to school every day with a big smile on my face, still constantly wanting to make other people's day brighter when mine really wasn't. It was friends. The laughter, the fun, and the love. This bad situation would eventually go away, as most bad situations do, but they never fully leave. Those months would have been excruciating had it not been for my friends. I owe everything to them for sticking by my side, always being happy to see me, 
and encouraging me to do those extroverted things I love so much. I jumped on a table in English class during a presentation, something I talk about endlessly, no matter how tired people are of hearing it. (laughs) Why I had confidence, how I knew I had friends. It makes such a difference in my life, and I am so, so grateful for what I have gained. So I've taken many more of those leaps since the day I asked a group of nearly strangers if I could sit with them, and my life has just drastically improved. My confidence is growing every day, and I'm just getting more and more comfortable with who I am as a person. I owe so much of that to such supportive people around me. And I do owe who I am today to those people that are no longer in my life. I want a lot of them back, and there's absolutely no reason I wouldn't be able to do that. Can you blame me for wanting as many friends as possible? Now, I've been talking about myself this whole time, which may come across as narcissistic, and it absolutely is. But now here's what I owe the lovely audience that's been listening. Life is a tough one. Constantly, daily, people struggle from the crushing weight of, well, not just high school, but everyday life in society. We're all just these weird, fleshy creatures on a big floating rock in space. But I believe there's a reason. I believe there's a reason we're all here suffering together. We can make it through all this needless suffering by finding strength in one another, in our loved ones, in our family, in our friends, together. (laughs) That's the key word, together. We're able to build these strong connections with each other. No one really understands why, and all we can do is guess. This is something a lot of people in the world need to hear, right now especially. We have to work together, support each other. One of my favorite phrases, build bridges instead of walls. We're able to build each other up instead of breaking each other down. Everyone can just grow collectively and thrive if we all work together. And that all starts with friendship. So please. Love your friends. Hold them close. Show them that you care about them. And don't ever be afraid to make more. What's the harm? Thank you.